Jake Rowe, what's happening, man? Big week for uh, practice updates. And I was just thinking, you know, Georgia hasn't really had any significant injuries yet, and then Lawson Lucky gets hurt. Yeah, um, you know, high ankle sprain for him. Um, kind of fortunate that he's not caught in A.D. Mitchell land uh, where A.D. Mitchell couldn't have the tightrope surgery last year. It sounds like, uh, from what everything I'm hearing, that Lawson Lucky is able to have the tightrope surgery which should bring him back a little quicker. Arian Smith had it last year, and uh, if I recall correctly, I did some digging on this, Wes. Arian Smith had his like right at the beginning of preseason camp, and he was he was probably again, if I'm recalling it correctly, was was cleared around week two or week three. Um, but he ended up he ended up playing um, you know that first uh, game in October. He ended up playing against Missouri. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be forever, but for a freshman, it's different, right? I mean, you know, Arian Smith was in year three of kind of learning that Todd Monk and offense, um, you know, Lawson Lucky is going to miss a lot of valuable time. Um, you know, this week, uh, is a big camp week. I mean, they're, 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 they're starting classes back. They started back today, but this is still camp mode. This is still get better, learn, install all that stuff. He's going to miss some time. And uh, that's going to set him back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you talk about what this period of time means for a freshman, and he was an early enrollee, so he got some time to, uh, you know, soak things in and, and soak things up like a sponge. But right now, it's it's the real deal. You know, you're you're really preparing for the run up to a real game right now. So yeah, it almost seems like it could be an exponentially big setback for him. Not that he can't overcome it eventually, but this is a, a critical time. Yeah, no doubt. And then you had Pierce Sperlin, right, who, um, you know, Pierce missed pretty much 12 practices in the spring. Um, you know, he he was hurt in the first fully padded practice that first Saturday of spring and then missed the next four weeks, um, you know, missed, uh, you know, three total scrimmages, uh, you know, there. So, um, and not only that, I mean, he he's a guy that, you know, really needed to fill out there too. So, you know, George is definitely not as deep as, as, you know, this year as they were last year at tight end. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's no questioning it. Um, you know, not even, even without the injuries, they wouldn't be, but it's in terms of experience, uh, but with the injuries, um, it, it adds a degree of difficulty there and, and further feeds into that whole idea that, that Georgia might spend some more time in three wide receiver, 11 personnel, uh, as opposed to 12 personnel that they really almost based out of last year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we heard from Oscar Delp as well, and I loved his uh, remark about everybody wants to be like Brock Bowers, but he's just trying to be the next Oscar Delp, and he's going to go a long way in this tight end room, helping its depth out. And I don't know what kind of formations or what kind of uh, platoon Mike Bobo had in mind, but I imagine we're definitely going to see a lot more of Oscar Delp now than we may have if Lucky didn't get hurt. Well, yeah, I mean, I still think you were going to see a ton of Oscar Delp, and I think you know that that Lucky may have may have spelled him a few more snaps a game than maybe Pierce Berlin's ready to do at this point. But um, you know, Delp and and uh, and Brock Bowers are your guys there. And what I'm really interested in, Wes, is all right. Well, you know, this shortness at the tight end room, right? Well, do you does that make you kind of take Brock Bowers out of some specialty roles that you may have used him in? You know, like we we saw practice yesterday, um, you know, for about you know twelve maybe fifteen minutes. I don't really do a count. And I don't like to look at the clock. I try to look at the field, and uh, you know, we were watching this quick uh, this this quick. Um, uh, they, I think Kirby Smart has called it the Millennial Oklahoma Drill. Uh, I think it's uh, he calls it that, and it, but it's basically just kind of a perimeter. So they don't do it in a parking lot, <laughs> right? It's kind of a perimeter screen type deal, where they're I mean they're really getting after it. And Brock Bowers lined up, you know, kind of beside the quarterback in the shotgun, took a swing pass. Well, you know, are, are you going to continue to maybe use him in a role like that and find creative ways to get him the football? If you're kind of shorthanded at tight end, I don't know. I don't know how they're thinking about that. Maybe they don't think there's any more risk involved with that. Maybe they do. Uh, you know, these coaches kind of, you know, they got weird brains sometimes, man. I mean, it's, there's just no doubt about it. I mean, Kirby, Kirby thinks that if we watched five more minutes of practice and saw that next period of them, you know, maybe working their dime defense, that maybe it might prevent them from winning a national title. These guys are pretty, pretty, pretty odd thinkers sometimes. And, uh, you know, that might be something that's on their mind. It could have a chain reaction 
uh, throughout some stuff. But I, I suspect since Saturday they've known they were going to be without Lawson Lucky for a good little while. And, uh, again, that tightrope surgery, if that is indeed what he's had, I can't confirm it, but that's what sounds like is happening. Um, that'll bring him back quicker. Than, than you know it would otherwise or, or they wouldn't do the uh or they wouldn't do the surgery yeah and ad mitchell is just kind of on the fence with that last year right. uh who's there was a tennessee receiver that had it cedric tillman and he got right back in action he's doing all right for himself 